What is up, YouTube? It's Max Merck here, and I'm here with my friend slash neighbor Tomas, and we're in the 2016 C300. And I've I already have a bunch of videos of this car on my channel, but we're gonna be doing an in-car review this time. So let's go ahead and start it up. It's a four-cylinder, uh, two-liter turbocharged engine, so it's not naturally aspirated anymore. So we'll go ahead and get started. So this is the 2016, and the 2015 is almost identical, but it's completely different than the previous generation. This is a rear-wheel drive version, and it's got, on the exterior, it's the, this is a completely base model car, so if you want to know what a completely base model C-Class looks like, this is it. Not a single option. So it's 4th of July weekend, uh, well, 4th of July just passed, and and this is a loaner car, while my W204, the previous generation C300, is getting a xenon bulb fixed. And as I was saying, this is a completely base model car. Not a single option. Not even satellite radio. Not even heated seats, nothing. And, and uh, there's a bunch of videos on YouTube of this car, because it's been a really, it's been a really high selling car. There's already a lot of these cars out, because pretty much compared to the BMW 3 Series, Audi A4, Jaguar XE, well, I'm not sure about the Jaguar XE because that just came out, but pretty much if you want a small, com not compact, but a small sized entry level luxury sedan, I mean a German luxury sedan, the C-Class is the way to go because compared to the 3 Series, the 3 Series hasn't changed for many years and it's it's getting kind of outdated if you look at the interior and everything. And the A4, that's many years old, that's been really outdated. Mm -hmm. So the 2016 model year is turbocharged um, compared to the outgoing model, which was naturally aspirated. That was a three liter and a three and a half liter naturally aspirated V6. And the engine variants for the new, for the new C-Class, this car, the W205, you can get this car, the C300, which has a two liter four cylinder turbocharged, yeah, turbocharged four, four cylinder. And this pushes about around 240 horsepower, give or take. And there's a biker right here. Maneuver around this. Yeah, compared uh, numbers are about the same as the outgoing model, which was around 240 as well. And then you can move one step up. Uh, the 2015 had the C400, but that's out of production. That had 302 horsepower. That was a V6, um, but that's out of production. So now it's the C450. But then again, Mercedes decided to change its mind. Now it's the C43. Either the C43. Yeah, it's the C43 AMG. Past three years, Mercedes can't make up their mind. Um, so yeah, it went from the C400 to the C450, now the C43 AMG, and those all have V6s. And then one step higher, you get to the C63 AMG. And as you've seen on my channel, I've, I've reviewed the C250, C300, which I own, this C300, and then the C63 AMG. And com compared to the C63, which has the seven-speed, um, Mercedes' seven-speed speed shift transmission, this is way ahead of that car, because up until now, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if this is dual clutch, I'm pretty sure it's not dual clutch, but the older Mercedes is like on the W204, the transmission was extremely clunky. This transmission is just a step up from the last model year. It can actually, it can actually compete with the competition when it comes to transmission. And then it also has something else that the previous model year didn't have. It's called dynamic. Uh, Actually, it's called Agility Select, but they changed it. On the 2015, it wrote Agility Select. Now it says Dynamic, but it's the same thing. It lets you choose between your uh, driving modes. So you got Eco, which changes the throttle response, and it basically shifts the highest gear to get the best fuel economy. And it uh, lightens up the steering. Auto Start Stop, this car does come equipped with Auto Start Stop. I mean, that's really, it's really smooth in this car. Like, as soon as you come to a stop, it'll just shut off and then take your foot off the brake. Starts right back up, very smooth, seamless. Um, compared to the other cars, like the CLS 63 AMG, it's a little notchy and choppy. On the CLS 550, same thing. But not, considering this is a two-cylinder, very smooth. And then moving up from Eco, you have Comfort. And that's what the default is. When you start up the car, it starts off in Comfort. And that... That also ch shifts to the highest gear, but also gives you some power, but it always goes to the highest gear. And then and then you have the lightest steering setting, and then auto start stop is on, 
and then your air conditioning settings are on comfort as well so it's not taking fuel into the consideration and then one step higher than that you have sport and in sport you have it'll basically it'll hold shifts a lot longer so you can actually see on the on the dash you guys can't see this but as you're driving if you change the modes it'll actually change the gears and then steering it'll stiffen up the steering as soon sorry about that as soon as you change it into sport from comfort or eco you can immediately feel the steering stiffen up and then last but not least air conditioning that doesn't change with sport yeah so one step up from sport you have sport plus and then if you're gonna be oh, yeah you can hear it right now it's, it's holding the shift it's not gonna upshift it holds the shifts for a lot longer and in sport plus it'll basically hold shifts up until about 3,000 rpm it won't shift for you until about 3,000 rpm and then steering very stiff you can hear auto start stop is on right now silent you can't hear anything very seamless and if I put my foot on the brake couldn't even hear that engines on now it's off again um, and then back in Sport Plus, as I was saying, auto start stop turns off in Sport Plus, and then the AC, nothing happens to the AC and the um, ventilation system. Uh, moving on from that, performance wise, uh, around, the torque I believe is around, two, uh, around 250 pound feet of torque. I don't know the specifics, I'm just driving the car. And as for that, as I said, the uh, this for this 2017 model year, they introduced the cabriolet and the coupe variant of this car, and they look almost the same, except for the back end. I think the back end looks kind of like the Honda Accord coupe. I don't like that a lot. Um, so let's put it. And then last but not least, I almost forgot. There's an individual mode for the dynamic agility control. So you put it in individual, you can adjust everything. And I set it so you can use the flappy paddle, the paddle shifters, and then the stiffest steering, the stiffest steering, and then auto start stop on and then the uh, AC in comfort mode. So this way you can basically get the best performance and the most comfort. And I like shifting with my hands, so I like the paddle shifters, and then this allows me to do that. So that's good. No other car in this segment has that. I don't believe the 3 Series does, and I'm actually the new A4 might. Actually, there's a 3 Series right there. You guys can't see it, but compared to the competition, it's a very good looking car too. Uh, unless you get the halogen headlights, which this car has. As I said, it's completely base. Um, but also, one, one thing I don't like about this car is the wheels. Um, completely base, it comes with 17s, but it's not like the older generation. The older generation, the 17s, look, they, they, they look like they fit. But this car, the tires are so fat, they're Pirellis, which is good too, but the tires are so fat, it kind of looks like a rental Mustang. So, give it. Oh, fuck it. Okay, yeah, we'll go right here. Yeah. Yeah, for, for a little four-cylinder, it's very peppy. Very, very peppy. And this is, the, this is the base model. I've driven the sport model and the luxury model as well. The luxury model, it's... You really can't tell a difference between the cars. Let me just adjust it, you guys. You really can't tell a difference between the cars. But as the name suggests, the, the luxury model is a little more soft, floaty. Not, not floaty, I take that back. It's, well, it's softer, it's softer suspension setup. The interior is a little different. And then for the sport model, you have um, cross-drilled brake rotors in the front. And I believe that maybe they're four-piston, I'm not sure. Um, but it's just a more sportier setup. And each of those is like around $2,000 option. So. Most of the most of the C classes you'll see are going to be the base model like this one. And in all honesty, I don't like the I don't like the front grille of these cars. If I'm going to get one of these, it's going to be the luxury because because it looks like an S class. I mean, every time you see one of the luxury models on the road with the LED headlights, I mean, you have to you have to second guess yourself: is it is it an S class or a C class? And then yeah, you can hear the auto start stop is on. You can't hear anything. Really seamless. Any opinion on the car, Tomas? <laughs> no, it's a good car. No? It's nice. Great car. Yeah, I mean, I'm just driving sometimes when I see Mercedes. Someone... And I don't know if it's a C class or an S class. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah. We, we gotta know the instrument, we gotta know. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, gotta know. And as I said, this car is rear wheel drive. And if you live somewhere with snow, 
never ever buy a real wheel drive Mercedes. Terrible. Um, Formatic is the way to go. Most of these cars are going to be Formatic. That's an extra option, of course, but if you live somewhere with snow or any ice, you need Formatic. Um, granted, granted, it's not going to be good, as good as Audi Quattro, and I'm not sure about X Drive for BMW, but Formatic is great. We've driven the car, uh, the Formatic in the snow, performs really well, but not the rear wheel drive, not at all. Interior quality. For a base model car, I like everything about this car except for the center console. The center console, it's it's like a it's like a piano black finish, but it's it's plasticky and in the sunlight you can see scratches and it just it's they cut corners right there. Um, but the aluminum that's nice. If you get the wood grain finish or the exposed wood grain, glossy exposed, either one. But if you if you have the choice, don't opt for the stock aluminum trim. And as for the interior, MB Tex, MB Tex feels very nice. Um, if you get the, if you opt for the two thousand dollar leather option, you get the illuminated door sills, ventilated seats, um, memory seats for the passenger, and the ambient LED lighting throughout the car. And besides the besides those for the interior, that's pretty much it. Other than the multimedia package, and that gives you navigation, that gives you. Pretty much navigation, $3,000 for navigation. I think that's a very stupid option. Um, most people just use Waze nowadays. Yeah, so the multimedia package, that's not really worth it in my opinion. It's good for resale value, but it's not really worth it. And then, as I was saying, you a must on this car is the LED headlights. Because if you don't get the LED headlights, first of all, it looks very ugly. Second of all, halogen headlights on a on a, on a car like this, it's just, it doesn't belong there, it's stupid. And the full LED, the full LED headlights, that's a little excessive, I don't think you're going to need those. Uh, most people aren't going to get that. And then blind spot, blind spot and blind spot monitoring and the rear view camera, I mean most people are going to opt for those because they're cheap and I mean a car like this should have it. And then for the driver assistance package where with the, the, the Stronic Plus, if the car drives itself and stops itself, I mean, most people aren't going to get that because I mean, you don't really need that option on this car. And panoramic roof, that's one of the most important things too. If you don't get the panoramic sunroof, then you're going to get nothing. It's just the steel roof like this. And unless you're okay with that, uh, that's really either or. You have to get the well, either or. And if you can get the panoramic roof, I mean, you're not going to regret that. And it helps with resale value too. And other than that, this car has a lot of standard equipment too, power folding mirrors, uh, Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth music, um, keyless entry is not standard, but if you can, keyless entry is really useful, but it's not really anything, I wouldn't get it if it was me, but it comes with the premium one package, and other than that, dual zone climate control standard, Burmeister comes with, the Burmeister sound system comes with the premium package. Um, that's about really, that's about it for the interior and for the exterior we went, we went over the trim levels and as for the way the car drives I mean it's what, what else can you expect from Mercedes it's smooth it's predictable and if you push the car I mean it'll it'll respond it'll go but it's very refined quiet and and one thing one thing most people don't like about this car including myself, I made a video about it. The sound this car makes, it's, I mean, you can hear the turbos and the blow off valve a little bit, but it's, compared to the outgoing model with the, with the V6, it's not really a good sounding car. Um, uh, but most people who buy this car don't care about sound, unless you're getting the AMG or the, C, uh, the C450 or the C43. And for this car, really, there's a lot of videos on it. I have a bunch of videos on it myself. It's a great car if you can if you're in the if you're in the market for a compact entry level luxury sedan. In my opinion, of course I'm biased, but in my opinion, this is the way to go compared to the 3 series or the A4. Cuz the A4, A4 is a great car, but I mean, I mean, have you seen the A4? It's not really a pretty car. And then the Jaguar XC could probably be one of the one of this car's biggest contenders. And that's about it for that's about it for this one, guys. As you can see, it has halogen headlights up front. I mean, for a 40 grand car, that's really ugly. I hate it. 
and LED daytime running lights down here. Let me show you guys under the hood. It's a four cylinder, four cylinder, two liter uh, turbocharged engine. Yeah, and one flaw of these cars is that this compartment right here, it gets really dirty really easily. Of all the W205s I've seen, all of them are completely filthy underneath there. Like, how does this get under there? What? Anyway, I'll go ahead and start it up so you guys can hear what it sounds like. As I said, it's turbocharged. You can hear a little bit of the turbo blow off valve. And as I said, this is a base model car, so you can get it in three configurations. Base model, which is this, Sport, which is the AMG styling with the 18-inch AMG wheels and the different front bumper. Same grill up front, and if you get the night package, this is all black. And then, <laughs> that right there, that's an option. No, I'm kidding, it's not. Um, and then you can get the luxury, which is, I got it. And then the luxury, which is, as you've seen in my videos, it's got the big grill with the bars and the standing Mercedes emblem. That's my favorite. It looks like an S-Class. Uh, those are pretty rare, but I like those a lot. So that's it for this video, guys. It was a really quick video, but I just wanted to go over the, the 2016 C300, and we'll finish it out with something a little different.